are we doing today? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. This is a comparison you guys have been wanting to see for a long time. I sell used tractors, so it all depends what models I have in stock at a particular time, but you're in luck today. We have the Kubota B2601 over here, comparing that against the John Deere 2025R, the new generation. So if you're looking at the 2025R, there's an old and a new. This is the new generation, the one that's currently in production as of 2020. And as a bonus, because why not give you more than what you asked for, we have a Kubota B2650 over here to kind of keep it in the same family of comparison here. The two series frame size, the B series frame size, kind of on the small end there, but that's what we're talking about today. And if you would take a moment, hit that thumbs up or a thumbs down and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. I do all sorts of tractor comparisons, tractor tips, tractor mods, tractors in action, a lot of tractor stuff. And read below, there's a description down underneath the video where you can go to a lot of different links for tractor products for tractor owners like you. All right, I wanna keep this fun because otherwise I get bored. We're gonna talk about the loaders first, how high they lift to a relatively level bucket, how much weight they lift. We'll talk about some other cool stuff. I'll hit dimensions, things like that at the end. I wanna go over features and other things they can come with, you know, cabs, backhoes, mower decks, loaders, snow blowers, whatever else like that that you can get for these machines here, along with capacities on the front and the back. Now for the record, this is the Kubota LA435 Swift Hatch Loader. This is the one that's currently produced with their redesigned system. You're gonna see with a eyeball level bucket it is 72 inches to the bottom lip there if we bounce over to the 120r loader that's found on the john deere 2025r again new generation relatively level bucket here to that bottom lip you're going to see that is 68 inches or so all right and then for uh, comparison's sake what do we have on this kubota la534 on the kubota b2650 this is not the swift hatch generation but it'll give you a number regardless. We're looking at, we're gonna call it 77 inches because that's a round number. Same thing with the, the other one. Okay, so now really quick, the maximum lift capacity at the base of the loader arm. So way back here, not out here where you're gonna have more of a load or say you had pallet forks that are pushing a load out even further, you're going to lift less weight if the weight's all out here versus way back in there. These numbers here are pulled right from the manufacturer. So that maximum weight to the max height way back here at the base of the loader arms, 950 pounds on the Kubota B2601. Same measurement over here on the, uh, the John Deere 2025R is gonna be 750 pounds. And over here on the B2650, a whopping 1,150 pounds. So there is quite a range, 400 pounds from 750, 950, 1150. These are all round numbers. It could be a few pounds more or less, but you know, these round even numbers make it a lot easier to understand. What we're talking about are these carrier brackets right here, okay? This is the base of the loader arm. It's very unrealistic to think that your load is gonna be positioned right here. So when you see the numbers posted online, this is how much they can lift to the max height or any, any amount of height. That number doesn't really mean a lot in the practical sense of it. A couple other things really quick about loaders, then we're gonna move on to something else, but all of these loaders that you see here are gonna be quick park, meaning they can all come off of the tractor fairly quickly. In my opinion, the 120R loader over here on the John Deere is gonna be the easiest. However, Kubota is catching up definitely with their new swift hatch design that they have here to do it all from the operator station. Let me show you something really cool about their system. So this little lever right here, this is all of your hydraulics that are coming from the tractor going up to the loader. Traditionally on the John Deere and the older Kubotas and anything else that's out there, you have a coupler for all four of these lines that you'd have to disconnect or reconnect. With this lever right here, once the, uh, the loader is actually off of the tractor, you simply pull that lever up, it disconnects all four of the hydraulics at the same time, and then you do the vice versa just to reconnect them. Something really important to pay attention to is gonna be the quick attach style of bucket that you might have on here. The base Kubota version does not come with a skid steer quick attach bucket. You will have some Kubota dealers out there that won't sell one without a quick attach bucket. These two levers that you can see up top there, but be aware if you are pricing and you're doing some price shopping, whether well, it's new or used, you wanna see these two levers on here to know that it's gonna be quick attach. If you have a pinned on bucket, that means you can't quickly swap this out for pallet forks, for a snow pusher, for a grapple, those other kinds of attachments. It makes it a lot less useful that way. So make sure you get yourself a skid steer quick attach. Over here on the John Deere, you're gonna have a standard John Deere quick attach. Yes, it's their own proprietary system, but I sell all sorts of attachments. A lot of companies sell attachments for the John Deere quick attach. There's no price difference. It's a very easy system to do and allows you to put the pallet forks on, snow pusher, grapple, so on and so on. 
Two things really quick before we get too far into it. I have not had a chance to clean either of these two tractors right here, so they look a little bit dirtier than they normally would. That one over here has had the full detail job. Second, I don't really think of the John Deere 2025R as a full frame two series anymore. It used to be the old design, but they have downgraded its loader capabilities. This is actually the same front end loader that's on the John Deere 1025R. They did make some really good improvements to it otherwise, but the loader is something they actually went the opposite direction. I kind of think of it more as a 1.5 series, not a full frame two series or that entry level compact. I know some of you have differing opinions about that, so if you do, leave a comment below. I do think of tractor weight, the base actual weight, physical weight of the tractor as a good comparison because it kind of lets you gauge the amount of steel that's in the machine. So about 1,600 pounds over here on the Kubota B2601, about 1,800 pounds on both the 2025R and the B2650. Now for you gearheads out here, we're gonna do a little bit of engine information, all right? So Kubota, they do make their own engines. These are gonna be Kubota engines that are in here. Everything's diesel, you're gonna have glow plugs. Over here on the Kubota B2601, you're gonna have a 25.5 horsepower engine, 68.5 cubic inches. John Deere has been using Yanmar engines on all their subcompacts and compact tractors for years, years and years and years, okay? You get up to the four series and larger, you're gonna have a John Deere manufactured engine, but rest assured, these tractors are actually manufactured by John Deere. It is not a Yanmar painted green, but the Yanmar engines are great engines in and of themselves. This particular one here is gonna be 23.9 horsepower, 77.3 cubic inches. And then rounding it out over here on the Kubota B2650, you're gonna have a 26 horsepower engine, 77 cubic inches. Well, I am starting to freeze. Our uh, sun is hiding behind the clouds, so I'm throwing a coat on. It is early December here, so I guess we're doing pretty good. Next thing we're gonna talk about here are the attachments, things like cabs, mower decks, snow blowers, backhoes, what you can get with these tractors. Okay, now let's talk about some options or some attachments you can get that are available for each one of these models. Things for the front end, for the back end, for up in here, all the above. First thing I wanna talk about are gonna be factory cabs, the kind of cabs that you can get with air conditioning and heat in them. This tractor is not available with that, neither is this tractor here. So neither the Kubota 2601 or the 2025R can get that factory cab with air conditioning. The only one available is gonna be the B2650. And just so you guys know, I haven't mentioned it, but it now has been replaced by the LX2610 and then its big brother, the LX3310. That's the only one you can get in the two series family of tractors with air conditioning and heat. So for up here on the front end of all of these, you're only gonna have the one loader option. So the one that you see on the tractor is gonna be the only variant. So if you wanna get a front mount snow blower, that's gonna be an option for all three of these. Same thing with a front mount blade. You take the loader off of all of them, you put the blade on, you put the snow blower on, it had its own quick hitch contraption. A note for you guys that are asking about snow blowers. The snow blowers run off of the PTO, which is actually the mid PTO. It's tucked way back here where the mower decks run, okay? So there's a long shaft that goes all the way up front. You turn your mid PTO on, it spins that auger, away goes your snow. So speaking of mower decks, here we have a good look at the mower decks that are available. Over on the Kubota, you're gonna have a 54 and a 60 inch variant. Same exact thing over here on the John Deere, 54 and a 60. These are both the 60 inch that you see on here. So just a little bit smaller for that 54 inch variant. Over on the B2650, you're gonna have a 60 inch and a 72. I do wanna point out a couple of significant differences though between these mower decks. So over here on the Kubota, you are gonna have a drive over mower deck here. You can see a, a ramp that's stored away here. I believe you kind of pull this out and store it back down here. You can drive right up on and over, that kind of thing. The one thing you're not going to have on the Kubotas is an auto coupler, an auto connect PTO system of any kind, meaning you're gonna have to get underneath here, disconnect that PTO that's here and then put it right back on, kind of aligning those splines. Taking these mower decks off isn't that big of a deal. It is a little bit more of a chore to put them back on. So the John Deere drive over mower decks here, they're actually called an auto connect, okay? Because there's nothing to really uh, link up in the front. You have a couple brackets, you just flip it on the backside. Literally, you just pull a little pin, you flip it up, and you just drive over, okay? There's no other parts or components to put out in the front and the back. And then the really cool thing is the fact that it has an auto coupler PTO. So you don't have to reach underneath here and try to align something or disconnect it or 
get underneath there to monkey around at all. So I really love that system. One of the most important things you can do is make sure you remove your mower deck if you're gonna use the loader, the, the three-point hitch, anything else besides actually mowing grass because it can be very easy to damage the mower decks. They, they hang down so low. These things don't raise up very high. So you wanna make sure you can take your mower deck off when you're using the loader, using the three-point. I actually just remembered I have a 54-inch deck for a 2025 r right here. We're gonna take a look at it really quick. So right here, this is an extra 54 inch deck I had that uh, somebody didn't actually want or need for their tractor. You know who you are. Um, but anyway, you can see right here, this is the Auto Connect system. It still has a PTO shaft on there. So this, like if you took it off for the winter, you would have to put it back on one time in the spring. But then this whole contraption, you can see the black arm here tied into this bracket tree, comes all the way across. That's your whole hanger system right there. But then right here, coming out of the gearbox, you're gonna have the male end, and then this is the female end right here. And so this is the part where this section here will stay on the tractor, and then as you back off, the gearbox with the, uh, the male end of the spline here will just separate, okay? So it's really cool. It makes it a lot easier to take on and off. It's a very good system, and again, it's all about convenience and making sure that you're protecting your equipment by doing things the right way. So if it's easier to take the mower deck off and protect it when it's not being used, the better off you'll be. So all three of these machines are gonna have a category one three-point hitch on the back, okay? They're all well within that. There's no cat zero, there's no cat two. Category one. So you're gonna run typically four or five foot uh, wide attachments on here. Maybe if you have like a landscape rake or rear blade, you could get into a six foot. It's gonna be angled. It's not gonna put much of a load on there, but everything else four and five foot wide. You can also put a backhoe on all three of these machines here, all right? So that is an available option. You gotta add hydraulics on there to do that. You have to add a subframe, a lot of other components that go into it besides just a backhoe. So it's an expensive endeavor to get into. That's one of the reasons that a backhoe for a tractor is on my list of the most overrated options or attachments you can get for a tractor. So right here, we actually have the backhoe that goes on a 2025R. This is actually off of my 1025R. So not only does the 2025 share the same front end loader, it shares the backhoe as well, the 260B backhoe right here, okay? So just to give you a nice little visual look of what it's all about, but has its own seat, really cool right here. That's one of the nice things about the redesigned um, John Deere backhoes. It does have a separate seat instead of flipping around or turning around the main operator seat. I kinda, I kinda like that option right there. Anyway, we have one here on hand, so I just wanna make sure you could take a look at it. So while we're talking about the backside of these tractors, I wanna give you a little bit more detail about their three-point hitch. Chris, come on up here really quick and take a look. What you're gonna see here on this Kubota, on actually both of the Kubotas, you see all these holes in these bars here. These are your draft links, and they are called telescoping draft links. So you can pull the pin out, and it might not do it right now because there's a, a bit of a, a load on there, but you can see this pin will come out, and it allows you to adjust the spacing. You can bring this um, arm in and out very easily and freely. We'll go ahead and demonstrate it on the B2650 since there's nothing attached to it, but um, that's a very nice feature to have. If you compare that against the John Deere 2025R, what you're going to have down here is going to be a very old style, uh, it's called a turnbuckle style here of, of uh, adjusting draft link, and you pull out um, the little retainer pin here that would hold it in place. Okay, so now that's out of there. You can see you've taken that out of there. You can replace these, and I've replaced them before with more of a cotter pin style or something else to uh, retain them, but then you can adjust this one way or another, you know, to pull it out. You can see how this bar is wanting to go out, or you can turn it the other way, and it will start to come in. So that's how you adjust the draft. It's a very simplistic and kind of archaic system and not something that I would really expect from John Deere. So if you take a look at Kubota's system right here, and for the record, John Deere does have a system similar to, similar to this on some of the larger uh, series of tractors. You simply pull this pin out and then you can adjust it in or out just like this. Find your position that you want. Put that pin right back down through there and away you go. Isn't that a lot easier? Now I do want to talk about a number now that I think might blow your minds. At least it blew my mind because it's just that impressive with these Kubota machines. The Kubota B2601, the three-point hitch will lift 1,800 pounds. Which I put to the test in a video I did when I compared the B2601 to the 1025R. I put a ballast box on there, I filled it full of weight, then I stacked as much weight as I could on top of it before it became too unstable and wanted to fall off. And I maxed it out and it just kept lifting up the weight. So. I believe it'll lift every pound of that and more. 
So 1,800 pounds on the B2601. Over here on the John Deere 2025R, this is gonna come in at about 1,200 pounds of three-point lift capacity. And then over here on the Kubota B2650, a whopping 2,100 pounds of lift capacity on this three-point hitch. Okay, really quick, we're gonna give you the lift height, the maximum three-point lift height, just to the center line of the pin. So the center line right here is what we're gonna give you. 26 and a half inches, max lift height right there. Over here on the John Deere 2025R, we're gonna call that 24 inches. And then if we come over here to the Kubota B2650, eh, we're gonna go ahead and say 25 and a half inches, just cause we're feeling generous today. Really quick what you see here, this is actually an aftermarket add-on. This is the Pat's uh, easy hitch, kind of quick hitch system here that um, doesn't work exactly the same way as a quick hitch does, but you will see some guys do prefer this kind of a system here. The main reason is it's gonna be a system that allows it to be a lot easier to connect to your three-point attachments. Some of those attachments, especially if on uneven ground or kind of cockeyed, can be a real pain in the butt to connect to. So a system like this or one of the Spico quick hitches that we sell will make life a lot easier for you. So all these tractors are actually outfitted pretty darn well. They're gonna be really nice operator kind of layouts and configurations here, just a nice overall operator station. You're gonna have features like cruise control, tilt steering, a padded floorboard, a seat with armrests like this. It's just, it's just well thought out, okay? You're gonna have your uh, pedals to go forward and backward. It's gonna be a hydro transmission no matter what model you get here. They're all hydro, none of them are available, and a gear drive. If you get a base version of the B2301, this guy's baby brother, I think you can get a gear drive version of that, but um, it's not very popular if it's still available. So one of the things I really don't like, and that's fine, you can like it all you want to, I do not like, pushing down with your heel to go in reverse and then pushing down with your toe to go forward. I don't like the treadle pedal design, it's just not my thing, but that is how uh, Kubota operates and it's just a setup, okay? John Deere, on the other hand, has a side-by-side -side hydrostatic pedal configuration. Again, I like this because it leaves the floor open, you know, nice open area here, I guess I should say. However, the go forward pedal is on the inside and uh, the go backwards reverse pedals on the outside. So that's still backwards to what you know, a car would have. So it still can provide some hairy situations. So neither one is absolutely ideal, but it is a difference in design there that you should be aware of. So while we're talking about transmissions, one of the great things I love about the Kubotas is they have a three range transmission, okay? Low, medium, and high. So low is for like your tillers, your brush hogging, that kind of thing. Medium is where I tend to kind of live. You know, the larger John Deere's, you get to a three R series or larger in John Deere and you start to get a transmission like this. But I love the medium, it's enough speed, but enough torque as well to do most jobs. And then high is really just for kind of going from point A to point B without a load, without going up hills, anything like that. So on the John Deere, you're gonna have just a low and a high. So low, high, n nothing in the middle. It's geared slightly differently than the three range on the Kubota, but I still prefer to have a three range though over a two range, just my opinion. So while we're here taking a look, I wanted to show you the fuel fill location over here on the John Deere on the fender, very convenient. Fuel gauge right here as well. Over here on the Kubota, you're gonna see the fuel fill is up here in the hood, not as convenient of a location. However, it is nicer that you're gonna be able to see, let's see, it's over here. Your fuel fill is gonna be up here on the dash. I do find that to be pretty nice. A couple other things I wanna mention really quick, even though I, I feel like they go without saying, but it's important to note them. These are all gonna have power steering. I know some of you kind of grew up on farms with manual steering on your Ford 9N, Ford 8N, whatever it was, but very nice feature to have. You don't realize it until you're on there sometimes. Wow, this is really nice to have. These are also gonna come standard with a two slash four wheel drive system, okay? So two wheels where you're gonna spend the majority of your time. You can engage four wheel drive or front wheel assist, you may hear it called, when you need it, if you're in muddy terrain in the woods, in the snow, that kind of application. It's also gonna have locking rear differential to lock that rear axle to actually give you as much traction as possible. So one other feature that these John Deere's have, which I wish the Kubota's had, I wish all tractors had in general, were more lights, more work lights, that kind of thing. So you have a fender light on the right and the left hand side here. 
Very easy to turn on and off. They come on and off at the same time as the headlights, but this is something that Kubotas don't have. If you get a cab station in the B2650 or that new LX series, you will get uh, options for cab lights that are exterior as well, but on open stations, only the John Deere, not the Kubotas are gonna have these fender mounted work lights. So one last thing I do wanna mention is the fact that there is not a step to get up onto your tractor operator station. So that's a pretty big step for some of us to make. And uh, you do not wanna use your mower deck. That is not designed to be a step. No, it doesn't say anything on there. I wish there was a sticker that said, don't step. But that's a good way to damage or misalign your mower deck and get it to cut all wonky and everything else. Let's take a look at that John Deere. So over here on the John Deere, you can see there is gonna be a step right here. Allows you to really cut off, oh, I don't know, four, five, six inches of height, something like that, and climb on up. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about damaging your deck. Problem solved. Over here on the Kubota B2650, you are gonna have a step option available. I almost wonder if this could be retrofitted to fit that Kubota B2601. I'm going to go ahead and make this really easy for you. Both the Kubota B2601, this guy right here, and then the John Deere 2025R in the middle are going to have 12 by 16 and a half on the rear and 23 by 8.5 by 12 on the front. Now this is going to be the R4 tread pattern that you see on all three of these machines. You can get a turf tire, you can get an R1 ag tire, you can even get more of a hybrid kind of like uh, the VersaTurf or an, a Goodyear R14 radial. I've done tractor tire tread comparisons uh, videos, an entire video dedicated to it actually. So check that out if you haven't seen it already if you want to get more information on the tread pattern options available for you. Over here on the Kubota B2650, you're gonna have a 12.4 uh, by 16 tire on the rear. A simple way to sum this up is that on the B2650, these rear tires are gonna be 36 inches tall. Over on the other two machines, the 2601 and the 2025R, those are both gonna be 32 inches tall. Up here on the front, you're gonna have a 23 by 8.5 by 14 tire. I'll be, uh... Now really quick, let's go ahead and give you the center line to center line, front wheel to rear wheel. Sixty-four inches here, center line to center line on the Kubota B2601. Basically the same exact thing over here on the John Deere 2025R at sixty-four inches. Over here on the Kubota B2650, you're about 67 inches center line to center line. Now really quick, let's also get the outside to outside with the rear tires. Okay, we're looking at approximately 49 inches here outside to outside. Now over here on the John Deere 2025R, we are looking at essentially 48 inches outside to outside. Last but not least, the Kubota B2650. This one here is substantially wider at approximately well, a good 54 inches, we'll say. Nearly 54 and a half. So this kind of information is good to know, number one, because it allows you to properly size the equipment, you know, the three-point attachments. If you only get a four-foot attachment on something like this B2650, well, you're not gonna cover your tracks, whether it's a box blade or a tiller, something like that, or even a brush hog. You also don't wanna have something that's too wide, too large either, because that's gonna be cumbersome, not gonna work well with the machine. The other reason I like to point it out is because as you can see, these are very long and relatively narrow machines. So ballast weight or counterweight is gonna be important both side to side to prevent tipping over this way, but also front to back because they're just kind of long and skinny, kind of lightweight as well. So you wanna do things like fill the tires with liquid ballast, put wheel weights on, maybe put wheel spacers in here, hang a ballast box on the back, all sorts of things. But there's a lot of ways to help plant yourself to the ground. Operator safety is very important. It's something you want to plan for ahead. I talk about it a lot. So make sure you have that plan in place before you find yourself in a situation where you're rolling over or feeling tippy or lifting wheels off of the ground. That's not a fun spot to be in. So I create these videos based on the things that you guys are asking me about and the things that I find interesting. So there's probably some details that are missing that aren't in here, all right? So leave a comment below. A lot of you guys out there own one of these tractors. So if you see a comment as well, see if you can respond to that because I don't always know the answer. So it'd be really helpful for you guys to help out the others watching. Now I have done some other comparisons. I've compared the B2601 to the John Deere 1025R. So you can see those differences there and maybe gather some different insights if you think you're leaning towards the B2601. 
I've also compared the 2025R here versus the old generation of 2025R. I've also compared that model, the 2025R, versus the 1025R and its big brother, the 2038R. So you can kind of see how these things align within or against other tractors. And it's always nice to have that visual to see even how they look, you know, just if they look a lot smaller, if they look pretty similar in size and that kind of thing as well. So if you're in the market for a tractor or an attachment to fit your tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. Read through that description below. There's going to be links to my website, links to other places to get really cool tractor attachments. Now we can ship these things all over the country, both the tractors and the attachments. We do it all the time, every day of the week. If you wouldn't mind, take a moment, give me a thumbs up, even a thumbs down. I don't mind either way. And also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button underneath the video. That would really help me out. Again, check out those links under the video as well. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.